AI in laptops, what is it and how does it work? Let's talk about that. At this point, I think almost everyone is aware of or in fact has used some form of generative AI, whether you're a student trying to get your homework done or a marketing guy making a social media post. AI has definitely, definitely made our lives easier. But what most of us might not have thought about is the risk and the downsides of using AI. And most of it has to do with privacy and security. Okay, let me give you an example. So when you ask ChatGPT to write a cute Instagram caption, or if you ask Midjourney to create an image of yourself with a famous Bollywood celebrity, we don't realize what's happening in the background. So what happens is your request is first sent to the cloud via internet and processed in huge data servers and then returned as an output, which means you are giving them access to your personal information that is being processed and stored elsewhere and then it's coming back to you as an output. But the worst part is we don't know how your data is being used or misused. So does that mean we should eliminate AI from our world entirely? Well, definitely not. What we should be focusing on is how to deal with the privacy concerns and the good news is we do have a starting point for it with a little something called on-device AI. Yes, it is exactly what it sounds like, on-device. There is no cloud or internet involved at all and all the AI processing happens on your device itself which you have access to. This has already started happening in smartphones with companies like Samsung introducing on-device language translation or what Apple did with notification summary feature on iOS. 18 that basically shows summaries of your notifications on your phone's lock screen. So what about on-device AI on laptops then? I am not sure if you have been keeping up with the news lately, but Intel has been pushing on-device AI quite aggressively, especially with its new Core Ultra lineup of processors. These processors feature a dedicated neural processing unit or NPU alongside CPU and GPU for handling AI workloads at extremely low power. Not just that, Intel is quite determined about it, so much so that they are collaborating with over a hundred software developers to make sure that all the AI stuff its Core Ultra chips are capable of is put to proper use. What do I mean by that is to effectively run on-device AI, not just the hardware needs to be powerful, but optimized software and power efficiency are equally important. So we teamed up with Intel to figure out just what all this AI PC fuss is all about. Now, to be clear, it's not like on-device AI has not been used in PCs and laptops before. They have, uh, like when you blur the background in video calls or use auto color grading in Premiere Pro, that too is on-device AI, but that process is taking up a big chunk of processing power from the CPU and GPU, which would also mean higher power draw than necessary. To solve this, Intel has integrated NPUs in the latest chipsets. So now what happens is, whatever AI tasks need to be run will be done by the NPU, reducing the workload on the CPU as well as the GPU. This means not um, only that particular task can be finished faster, you could be saving a lot in terms of battery life too, which is extremely crucial on a mobile device like a laptop where your power is very limited. So rather than just taking Intel's word on how well the NPUs on the latest processors work, we decided to test it ourselves and after looking it up on the internet for hours, I found three popular creative applications to test if on-device AI is in fact viable or not. First of all, I wanted to check how much load can the NPU take off of the CPU and GPU while using something like Stable Diffusion. Um, so in case, if you didn't know, Stable Diffusion is this text-to-image model like DALI and Midjourney, but unlike those two, this one's open source as well. I did all my tests in this new Acer Swift Core 14 with Intel's Core Ultra 155 Edge processor and also compared it against last year's model with the Core i5-13500 Edge chip inside and as you can see from these graphs, that nifty neural processor is working its magic as promised. The 13th gen machine with no NPU of its own relies heavily on the graphics power to finish the job, while the average GPU load hovering is at a staggering 90%. Whereas the NPU does most of the heavy lifting on the 14th gen system to significantly free up the GPU, and I mean significantly. This guy chugged a lot less power in comparison while also finishing the task nearly two times faster. 
I'll let you guys be the judge on which one delivered better looking images of a vintage luxury car as I directed in my prompt. But there's no denying it, the NPU on Intel's Core Ultra chip is no joke. Next up, I tried editing a short video on Wondershare's Filmora by applying a couple of effects and that neural processor proved its worth this time as well. Weirdly enough, the CPU and GPU's power consumption was marginally higher here when previewing the clip on the timeline. But when I actually rendered the preview, the 14th gen system had it all. Lesser power consumption, lower CPU usage and faster render time. But I did not have the same luck when trying to generate a 10 second beat on Audacity. The NPU on the latest Swiftco 14 did free up the GPU load by quite a bit as expected, although it was slow in generating the result that I can't say it was worth it at all. And when I repeated the test without the NPU, both of them took the same amount of time, with quite a different CPU and GPU usage pattern. Now, this could just be some optimization issue that I hope gets fixed with the future release of the music generation model, so I will not worry so much about it. But besides these, there are other real-life implications too, like recently at Computex, Intel partnered with Samsung on an ultrasound machine that uses Intel's NPU. Previous versions of a similar ultrasound machine used a lot of GPU-powered AI to capture a child's heartbeat, but using the NPU helps save a lot of power and reduces load on the CPU as well as on the GPU. Okay, let's wrap things up now. And if you've been keeping up with everything that I've said so far, then it really should not come as a surprise when I say that I am all in for on-device AI. With the right combination of hardware and software, being able to run AI models locally without ever connecting to the internet has a ton of benefits. From data privacy and security to ease of access and reduced operation costs. Not just that, but on-device AI has a lot of sustainability implications as well since you're effectively reducing the energy cost of running AI models on colossal server farms. I couldn't find any data on the energy cost of AI data centers alone, but according to the International Energy Agency, the combined energy consumption of data centers, cryptocurrency and artificial intelligence made up to 2% of the global energy demand in 2022, with that number expected to double by 2026 already. Whereas some expert estimates suggest that ChatGPT sips 500 ml of water for every 5 to 50 prompts it answers, which sounds horrifying. So yeah, with the generative AI boom not slowing down anytime soon, it feels like on-device AI is here to stay for good. And I can only hope that all the infrastructure necessary to support it, including the processors, the software, AI models, everything get more capable and also more accessible in the coming days. So everybody, that is all for this video. I hope you found it informational. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit that notifications icon. Till then, I'm Pratima Adhikari and I'll see you in my next video.